How you feeling, brother? I'm good. I'm good. I'm blessed. Glad to hear it. Yeah. Glad to hear it. So, who is Michael Pratt for anybody who may not know? Uh, that's a good question. Well, you know, I just figured that out. You know, I'm an individual who lived by a different standard rules. You know, uh, they call me Pee Wee for people that don't know. Uh, a childhood name that just grew with me and you know that's who I am it's a pleasure to meet you it's a pleasure to meet you meet the audience how y'all doing alright where were you raised and what impact would you say it made on the man that you are now uh, I was raised in South Central uh, on the east side in a crazy crazy environment like you know, where you had to be tough. You know, you had to be like gritty and grimy, you know, on the east side. Uh, the impact it had on me is like, it turned me into, probably I could say somebody I didn't want to be, you know. And this took me under really like the streets really like grabbed a hold of me and took me and had me for a long time. Yeah. All right. What lesson would you say you've learned the hard way? Man, crime don't pay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like if you into crime and you think that's going to get you to where you're trying to be, uh, erase that you know it's not going to get you there I mean for the moment it may but it's not it you know what I'm saying yeah it'll take you down the road you ain't trying to go for <laughs> sure no I feel that was when you when you were growing up would you say that there was anybody in your life that you looked up to as a role model and if so what would you say it was that you admired about them? Uh, that's crazy because I really didn't have no role model or looked up to nobody coming up. Like, ah, oh, man. In my era, it's really like you didn't really have a role model. Like, to be honest, probably the streets was my role model. You know, because that's all I had was the streets. Like, that's the only thing I looked up to. You know what I'm saying? It taught me a lot. You know what I'm saying? And I, that's what had me is the streets, man. I think that's the only role model I had is coming up. And do you feel as though, like, if you would have had a better role model, you would have been in the same, like, you would have went down the same route? Uh, honestly, nah. Nah, and I always look back and say that, like, if I probably had a, a, a proper role model, somebody that was there to push me, uh, I probably would have been a, a different individual, you know, because I was into sports like basketball. I play basketball like crazy, but I didn't have that push. Nobody to put the ball in my hand. Nobody to take me to the courts and be like, man, get it. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't have that, you know. But most definitely, if I had that, I probably would have been, this interview probably would have been a, basketball interview or something, you know what I'm saying? Nah, I feel you. For sure. Nah, so. I feel that. Um, did you have both of your parents in your life or? Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, I had both parents, but I was living with my moms and then I was living with my pops. Like, I was back and forth. Bounced around? Yeah. Okay. And what would you say, like, what was your, what was your living environment like? Like, inside the house? Uh, chaotic you know like me and my mom we really didn't really see eye to eye probably because you know the situation she was going through you know young trying to raise two boys you know as a teenager you really don't know how to be a parent you know what I'm saying and I was kind of rebellious and it was just chaotic in the house like every day it was something 
And that's what kind of like drove me to the streets too. Like not want to be in the house, not want to deal with the that environment. You know. No, I feel that. Yeah. You're going elsewhere to get yourself out away from that. Exactly. Exactly. No, that makes sense. Would you say? So this kind of piggybacks off of something I, you uh, said earlier, but what version of yourself did it take you the longest to go out of? Uh, I don't know. I'd probably say being patient. You know, I didn't have patience. Like, everything was got to happen now. Got to have it. You know what I'm saying? And now... I grew out of that. Now I have patience, you know, and with patience, you see growth. So now I see like with patience that it goes a long ways, you know what I'm saying? Because you be grateful for whatever it is that you're striving for and that you're trying to accomplish versus just trying to get it and, you know, and it's gone. Now that makes sense. So I would say patience. At the end of the day, the journey is the reward, so... Yeah. Being... Being patient, and you really get to see it and enjoy it as you go on that journey. Because you put the work in. Exactly. Exactly. How would you say... How do you feel about social media, like, in the times that we are now? What do you think? Man, social media is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like... It opens you up to a lot of stuff that you don't know and it also can hurt you you know social media can be for you and it can be against you you know it's it's a double-edged sword it's just how you use it you can use it uh, to catapult you or you can use it in a negative way so social media is like it's like a curse kinda you know how I look at it Nah, I, I agree. It's definitely yeah. a double-edged sword. Yeah. It's really just about how you use it. And exactly. What, and what you use it for, you know. Nah, absolutely. Yeah. What would you say is your driving force? Like, what, what keeps that fire under you to keep going, you know? Because, you know, it isn't hard. You know, uh, like, right now, my driving force is skating, you know. Like, skating is like, my main focus now is like the four point of everything. It keeps me grounded, you know, and it helps me navigate through my situations in life that I still go through and still struggle with. So, skating. Do you have any passions outside of skating? Or like is skating um, like the main one? Skating is the main one, but I still play basketball. Like, I love the game of basketball. Like. At the age I am, I still play basketball. Like, you know what I'm saying? I still get out there and play. So, most well, definitely basketball. And do you feel as though passions are important for for people? Like, do you? absolutely, passion is is very important. You know, it helps you. It helps you grow. It helps you maintain yourself, and you know the people around you, because like. Other people may see you do something and be like, oh, that's nice. Like, you know, whatever it may be, you know what I'm saying? Whatever your passion is, somebody may see that and take that and be like, okay, now I want to do something. I want to, you know, so having a passion is, is, is important. Yeah. No, absolutely. What would you, if you could tell one thing to your 13-year-old self, what would you tell him? Oh man, my 13 year old self, oh, he was crazy, man. I probably would tell him like, just weather the storm, you know, just weather the storm, stay grounded, stay focused, and you know, don't let nobody disrupt what you got going on, you know what I'm saying? And that's what happened to me. I let everybody around me disrupt what I had going on. And if I didn't, I probably would be a different individual as well too if I would have just stayed to what I know. Yeah. And what would you say is something that 
your community needs to implement that will help the coming generations get ahead? Man, well, when I was coming up, they had like gain inventions. You know, they had, you know, dare programs, you know, not to do drugs and all that. Nowadays, I don't think you have that, like, to tell the youth, like, this not the path to go. You know, you need more gang intervention, you know, because a lot of youth now is turning towards gangs more now I'm seeing, especially on social media. So you need a lot of people to come forward and, like, to help the youth to, like, navigate away from that. You know, and do something positive and, you know, structure with their life. No, like, for real. Yeah. For real. What is your special item and why is it of such importance to you? Uh, well, I don't really have a special item, but now I may say it's my skates. And uh, they're important to me because they represent everything to me, you know what I stand for, where I'm going in life, and it's, they like, my security blanket. <laughs> Keep you sane. Yeah, it keeps me really sane. Nah, I feel like <laughs> And uh, where do you see yourself in five years? Well, in five years, uh, owning my own skate business, building skates, uh, trying to help people learn how to skate, uh, show people that, you know, skating is an outlet for some people that needs it. You know, you can always go there and just tune in to yourself, the music, the culture, you know, so yeah. Oh, absolutely, I see it. Yeah. I can see that. <laughs> and uh, is there anything you would like to leave with the audience? Uh, just stay true to yourself you know don't try to be nothing that you're not don't try to do nothing that you can't do and just be you you know what I'm saying stay true to who you are man and just stay away from the negativity keep positive in your life you know keep positive vibes around you you know, that's what I would lead the audience with. Nah, that's real. Yeah. Alright. Have you ever been incarcerated? Uh, actually I have. Uh, I just got out not too long ago from doing uh, 23 years in prison. You know, straight, no breaks. That's uh, a long stint, you know what I'm saying, for uh, carjacking, robbery. Uh, it was a long journey, you know, and to come out on the other side of it, it's kind of bittersweet, you know, because doing all that time kind of like institutionalized me and certain ways of my life like like I said before I live my life by different rules and standards and uh, that's because of the time I did like you can tell me like hey Mike I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna be by your house at 10 o'clock come 10 o'clock you're not here now it's a problem you know what I'm saying because your word is everything so that's what I stand by if I tell you Today, I'm going to be at your house at 10. Best believe I'm going to be at your house at 10. You know, so it's like little perks that I have, like, like can rub me the wrong way. You know what I'm saying? Like, you tell me something and you don't do it, I feel like I'm cool on you. You know what I'm saying? And I'm trying to get out of that, you know, because it's really it's not how you're supposed to live your life. You know what I'm saying? But due to what I've been through, that's how I live my life. You know, different rules, different standards, you know. And it's a long journey, man. It was it was very tough mentally, physically, you know, not having your family there, not having nobody 
you can call on when you need something like being in a cell 24 hours a day like it's crazy man like the setup is you in there with another man like I live with another man like literally five years straight just me and you in the cell for five years no other person just me and you every day I wake up I see you I go to sleep wake up see you just every day for five years know your whole routine know everything you do what you like what you don't like like we're in a couple or something you know what I'm saying it's crazy bro like it's crazy how you just how they just put you in there like that this warehouse you so you know like people that's out there doing these crimes and thinking oh yeah I'm gonna get away man sometimes you do sometimes you don't but when they catch you they got you you know what I'm saying they put you in themselves it's like it's like crazy to be up in there like that man it really is for all them years it's crazy to live like that like the food they feed you to the clothes they put you in it's all to just humiliate you, you know? And some people learn, some people don't. And I learned, you know, it took me a long time. I guess it took me to go through that, to learn, but I wouldn't change it because it really made me who I am today. Like, and I, I appreciate who I am, you know what I'm saying? Because if I didn't go through that, I'll probably be dead on the streets or still affiliated with gangs. So it kind of opened up my eyes to see the other side of everything, you know, because what people don't understand about prison, you can be in a gang out here, but when you go to prison, most of that is out the window. You know what I'm saying? Because if a riot kick off and you a blood and I'm a crip, I got to help you still. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter what color you from or none of that. At the end of the day, is you black, I'm black. We against them, they against us. So for people that's out here killing each other, and then when you go to prison, that same gang that you done went and killed, it's the same people you gotta protect. So why even do it? You feel me? And I never knew that concept until I went to prison. Like, I'm in prison like, man, what's up with these? Like, they like, nah, it ain't like that up in here, bro. You feel me? Like, you see him getting down and you don't go help, that's your ass. You know what I'm saying? So I don't care if he a blood or he your enemy. If some Mexicans on him, you better help him. If he a crip and some bloods is on him, you better help him. You know what I'm saying? So people need to know that. Like, don't think you can go up in there and not help nobody because he a blood and or he a crip and that's my enemy, you don't help me. Oh yeah, they got something for you. So you gotta be cautious of how you move up in that mug and all the politics is different. So it's just a crazy world, it's a whole different world up in there. Like, it's different. So to do all that time and then to come out to a whole different world is like reborn again. Like, I went to prison, it wasn't no social media wasn't really cell phones you know I went to prison in 98 it was just like coming with little cell phones I went to jail with still pagers you know what I'm saying and it went from pagers I guess to two ways and chirps and all that other kind of stuff to now you can just touch the phone and talk to the phone so it's a big difference it's a big difference from what I came from to what I got out to it's like mind blowing you know just being in prison, seeing like the sky, like for 10 years, I guess I only seen the sky. You know what I'm saying? Nothing around me, you can only look up. That's all you see is walls and the sky. You know what I'm saying? And you walking in a circle constantly. My life consists of a circle on a yard. It's a one motion, you can only go one way. You know what I'm saying? And that's your whole life in that circle. Until you get up out of there. You go to the yard, you walk the track in a circle. That's all you do all day. Then you go in the cell. Then you repeat that. You know what I'm saying? So this is a process you repeat 
for however long they give you. And for me, it was 24 years, so I did 23 of that, getting in trouble, fights, riots, whatever. But it's a continuous motion. That's all you do. You sit in your cell, you come out your cell. You go to the yard, you walk them laps. That's all you do up in there, bro. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. I, it feels like you said you were in for 23 years, so you said you went to jail with a pager and you came out and it was cell phones. That almost seems like like a time machine almost. Exactly, like, like. Like you went to the future or something. Yes, it's like you was, it's like one of the movies I seen, I think it was with, uh, I want to say it was with Wesley Snipe when they froze him in time. Uh, I forget the name of that movie, but he, he did, he did time and they freeze you. And when he got out, the year was like 2020 something, like we in the future. But that's how it seems like they put you in there. And when you get out, it's like the future. You know what I'm saying? One year can, you know what I'm saying? Things change in one year. So just imagine 23 years of constant change and change and build. So when I got out, it's like, the hell is this like all these people when I went it wasn't overcrowded you can get on the freeway and smash now you every day is overcrowded you can't get on the freeway you know so it's like a time warp really yeah that's it crazy. was really like a culture shock you know what I'm saying you get out and see everything change computers like you went to jail. I went to jail was like the big Apple computers, you know, them big brick computers. Yeah, that, the Big Macs. Yeah, like in green, you know what I'm saying? Everything looking fuzzy, you know. Went to jail was what? Sega Genesis, now is PlayStation 5s and, you know, all kind of stuff. Virtual stuff, you know what I'm saying? Where it looked like you really there. Like, it's crazy that to see that, you know. I wasn't a part of it, but to see it, like, I actually seen it forming and growing through TV, watching TV, just like, oh, damn, they came out with a cell phone, oh, oh, a touch screen, like, what that do, like, from a <laughs> flip <laughs> to a, you just touching, like, man, like, you know what I'm saying, Apple Watches, like, I can just talk to it and just do stuff, like, you know what I'm saying, I went to jail, you had to wind your little watch up to make sure it was ticking. You know what I'm saying? So it was, it's, it's crazy how everything changed. And yeah, like decade, I, two decades I did up in there. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, two decades up in there, man. And like, do you have, are you still close with like any people who you did time with? Yeah, yeah, like I still talk to a couple guys that, a few guys that got out, that's out. That we still we go play basketball. A couple, a couple guys then came up to the skating ring and watched me skate. And you know some of them they skate now. And I had a Selly that skates now. You know what I'm saying? I got him skating. So yeah, I talk like every day. I talk to guys. You know, still in prison. They call me collect. I still talk to them. You know, send them money when I can. You know, because I know the struggle is real up in there. Like you really don't have nothing. So anything is something. So yeah. So, uh, could you explain what, like, in depth, so, like, somebody can paint a picture in their head of, like, what what a full day looked like? A full... Like, wake up time, go to sleep. A full, wake up to go to sleep. A full day in prison is they waking you up by, like, five for breakfast. You know what I'm saying? Where I was at, they bring the breakfast to you, open a little tray slot, give it to you. You know what I'm saying? A milk, uh, some oatmeal. Half of the time it'd be cold. You know what I'm saying? Because they put them all on a, like a, stack them all on a, like a, a tray and walk down the tier with them. So they passing them out as they go. So by the time you get to you, your tray probably cold. But this all you have, so you gotta eat it. You know what I'm saying? You have nothing else. I mean, you may have something else, but for people that don't have nothing, that's what you're gonna eat. After that, about eight o'clock, uh, they may run yard for an hour. You go out to the yard, get your hour yard. Once again, you either walk in a lap, 
playing handball, basketball, working out, whatever you do. Uh, once that hour over, <laughs> you back in the cell. And for the rest of the day, that's where you will be in the cell. Uh, give you a five minute shower maybe later on. After that, you back in the cell for the rest of the day. Uh, feed you. Uh, oh, your breakfast and your your breakfast and your lunch is the same. So they feed you breakfast and they give you lunch all at one time. So if you eat your breakfast and your lunch, you're done until they feed you again at dinner time, which is around like four o'clock in the evening. And then after that, you won't eat again until the next day. So that's your that's your whole day right there. You know, you get your hour out, you get you five minutes in the shower, and the rest of the day you up in that cell. Yeah, when you in the cell, are you able to do things like read or? Yeah, you get books. They got libraries. Uh, you get TV. You get a TV in there. Uh, headphones. Uh, you know, little stuff like that. Like, uh, it's crazy because when I went to prison, uh, I wasn't going to school, so I went to prison reading probably like on a fifth grade level. And uh, through over time, uh, reading books, because you got to go to school in there. That's one thing they gonna they gonna have you going to school. So eventually, I end up uh, start reading on it. Taking a test and passed with like a 12.5 reading. Uh, I enrolled in college, uh, started studying sociology, started taking sociology courses. So, I mean, you know, you can, if you want to learn, you can learn. You know what I'm saying? It's just about you and what you do with your time. You know, some people don't do nothing with their time. You know what I'm saying? I took advantage of my time that I was there. And you know, got a few trades, and you know, educated myself. No, oh, absolutely. Yeah. And um, would you say that when it comes to like family visits and collect calls, how does that how does that whole thing work? Uh, wow. Well, when I first got there, you was getting a phone call once a month. I don't care if you got through or you didn't. That was it. You get one call a month, and you had to make it make sense. You know what I'm saying? Whoever you was calling for money or whatever, that was your one call. Hey, I need some money so I can go to the store or, you know what I'm saying, whatever I'm going to do with it. That was it. Uh, visits, it's kind of it's kind of tricky because it depends on the location you at. Like, I was way up north in Sacramento. So trying to get a visit from my mom way down here in California, LA it was like a 13 hour drive or so visits was out, you know what I'm saying? So I didn't really get visits, you know what I'm saying? During my time up there. But once I got closer to like Lancaster, you know, certain people, my uncle, you know what I'm saying? Girl, wife, they come see you, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, once I got closer, visits was kind of cool. And how many different, like, how many different facilities have you been in, like, do you, do you get transferred a lot? Is uh, it depends on your behavior about your transfer or your points. They have a point system. But for me, I did, I went about five or six different prisons. You know what I'm saying? Level, mostly level four prisons, like high security prisons I was in. Uh... New Folsom, uh, Sentinella, uh, Solano, uh, Delano, uh, Lancaster. So I've been to a few different prisons. And those are all, those are all California. Uh, all California prisons. Yeah. So you do you like get you get put in a prison in the same state where your offense was at? Uh, they was doing that like that, and then they had came up with overpopulation. So they was locking up people so fast that they had nowhere to put people. So they started sending people out of state. Like, so I'm from California. They would send me to New Orleans to do my time. I don't know nobody in New Orleans. 
But since the prison is overpopulation, these are the only where they can house me. They made contracts with different states. So they start sending people from California to different states, regardless of where their family was or whatever you had going on. And it didn't matter. You know what I'm saying? All of you is you just a number. So when it's time to move, you're going to move. So if they tell you going to Alaska, best believe you're going to Alaska. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. I don't care if you don't know nobody in Alaska. That's where you're going. And that's what they was doing for for a long time. You know, they were just rounding people up like her and get up out of here. Dang, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care <laughs> what you know. Tennessee, I don't know nobody. That's where you're going. You know, you had people refuse. They're going to drag you. They're going to put you on that plane. They're going to shackle you and you going to Tennessee. And that's where you're going to do your time at. Alright, so inside, I mean, um, did riot, were riots like a usual thing or like how did that whole... Uh, riots was, you know, sometimes they're, they're, they're spontaneous. Like, you can be talking like me and you and next thing you know, it's, it's on. You know what I'm saying? You look up like, that was what? And it's on. You know what I'm saying? It's time to react. It's time to get cracking. You know what I'm saying? Like you can be playing basketball, and next thing you know, they down on the yard. You get to look in it. It's going down. You know what I'm saying? And either you're going to try to get to it, or you're going to sit down. And, and if you sit down and you don't get to it, it's a problem. You know what I'm saying? Once it's smoke clear, they're going to do a head count. Man, where you was at? Oh, I was over here. Why you wasn't over there? Oh, I couldn't make it. Oh, we're going to deal with that later then. You know what I'm saying? So... You had to get you had to, you had to get cracking when it was time to get cracking. No matter what the situation is, I don't care. You had to go. And when they had those riots, how did they usually like break them up? Uh, shoot you. They gonna shoot. They gonna throw bombs. They gonna pepper spray you. Whatever they all what all means forced to stop it. You know, I done seen a lot of people get killed up in there, in riots, and I mean killed, shot, dead, left to the corner come get you. Yeah, stabbed to death. Shot, bombs, they everything. Yeah. Dang, so they were shooting with real bullets? Real bullets. Real bullets. Real bullets, bro, like two, two, threes. Real bullets. I thought that they would shoot like rubber bullets or something like Nah, they got rubber bullets, but they like, uh, they shoot them first. To try to like, you know, uh, you know, get people off you. But once that don't work, then they go to the real thing, real live rounds. Cause once they see a knife, they really don't have to shoot the rubber bullets. Once they see a knife and it's a threat, they have all rights to hit you with a, a live round. So once they see that metal and you stabbing somebody, they gonna hit you with that live round. Dang. That's yeah. So it's like it's a 50 50 chance that you even make it out of there, bro. Like you can go in there with two years, three years. I seen a dude come in there with uh, a violation and get killed by a celly in there fighting. So it's like the danger is real, bro. Like it's real. Like it's real. I done seen people get shot that wasn't even in the incident. You know what I'm saying? Bullet ricocheted and hit the ground. You know what I'm saying? And hit somebody way over there. Like, the danger is real in there. And yeah. would you say it's more dangerous than, like, the outside world? Yes, 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 most definitely. Most definitely it's more dangerous than the outside world. The outside world, you can, you can kind of, like, navigate and, you know, get your own way up out of it. But in there, there's no navigation because once that door open, it's on. You got to step out that door. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no, you know, now it's like you got the options to come outside. When I went to prison, you had no option. Yard was mandatory. So when that door opens, you have to come outside. So once you outside, it's a whole different world now. You know what I'm saying? It's goons, it's sharks, it's predators out here. 
real life predators out here and it's like it's on so once you hit that yard bro it's like it's on you got to put on your whole new face you know what i'm saying when you hit that when that door open you grab your i don't give a fuck face and put that motherfucker on and hit that yard because now i don't give a fuck because whatever happens you gotta be with it Damn. you gotta be with it bro like you can, we can be talking like right now, having a conversation, and one of my boys come over and be like, hey, homie, it's on with the Mexicans. So now I'm like, oh, is that right? All right, boom. So now we finna go dig the knives up, we finna go do what we gotta do, and now we finna go get at the Mexicans. Or it's on with the Bloods. Or it's on with another Crip car. And it's gonna, it's gonna go up. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be bombs thrown, it's gonna be gunshots. It's going to be bleeding. It's going to be all what you can imagine. It's going to be right there. People hauled off in stretchers, stabbed up, stomped out. You know what I'm saying? It get real grimy, bro. It get real grimy up in there, like, every day. Like, you know, I ain't going to lie. Some days I used to be dreading. Like, they'd be like, ain't no yard. I'd be like, whew, thank you. Man, we ain't got yard today. That's cool. <laughs> I'd rather sit up in this cell, man. Some days it be like that, bro, where I don't care how hard you is, man, it just, you just don't want to deal with it sometimes, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, I don't even want to deal with that today, like, you know what I'm saying? You can walk outside and just feel the tension, like, oh, something's going to go down today. And you just stand in this look, and before you know it, there it go. Two people done stabbed somebody over here, you know what I'm saying? Every day something's going to happen. Every day, man, every day. Then they lock you down like I done been like on lockdown for like 18 months. Like and the lockdown is like where you don't have no movement. Like you're in your cell 24 hours a day. Just imagine 18 months, bro. Only place I'm going is to the shower and back to my cell. 18 months. That's all I'm doing. Shower, cell. Food come to me. Everything come to me. Medical, going to shack you up. Take you over there, bring you right back for 18 months. You don't see no sunlight, bro. You don't see nothing. Nothing. But me and you, I'm going to just see in my celly every day. Have you ever had any cellies who you didn't get along with? Yeah, heck yeah, man. I had a few, a lot of cellies, cell fights. I done had cellies that didn't get along with. Like, Cause you're not gonna be compatible with everybody, you know what I'm saying? Like, they just come and just throw anybody in a cell with you, you know what I'm saying? It can be your enemy, you know what I'm saying? Just throw you up in there. I'm a crip, they'll put a blood up in there. You know what I'm saying? That's how they used to do you, and y'all figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Real life, bro. So, you know, I, I, done, I done seen a lot, I done been through a lot. And, you know, I'm just blessed to be able to come on this other side and to be able to just to tell my story about, you know what I'm saying, the struggles and the hardship and everything that I done endured and I done saw, bro, like it been behind the walls. Yeah, real life situations up in there, man. Like, dangerous. Dangerous. And how many, as far as, like, diversity in prisons, like, what is it? How diverse would you say it is? Like, what, how many different types of people have you seen? A lot. I can't even count. It's like so diverse, bro. It's, you and think everybody it, just click up. Yeah. 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 And wow. like I say, it's a, it's a different world, man. Really, like it's like the underworld. It's like. No rules, no whole bar. You know what I'm saying? Only thing saving you is uh, a cop in the tower. And that's only if he want to save you. You know, sometimes they'll turn their head like they know what's going on and be like, shh, get you hurt. Get you hurt, seriously hurt. Have you ever been injured while you were? Yeah, I done been injured. I done been injured. You know what I'm saying? I done been knocked out up in there in a riot. Yeah, I done been injured. Uh, injured in cell fights. Mm-hmm. Nah, that's crazy. Yeah, really. Yeah. 
that pretty much wraps it though. For sure, for sure. Thank you for sharing your story. Uh, thank you, I appreciate it. No problem. It's been a pleasure.